Jason Todd was the second Robin of Batman, taking over the role when Dick Grayson moved on to become Nightwing. And shortly after this, Jason Todd was captured and killed by the Joker, being beaten with a crowbar before finally being blown up. Now this was the comic event that was entitled Death in the Family, and it's one of the most famous Bat Family stories that have ever happened, and is also one of the most important. But it nearly happened a very different way, because originally Jason Todd wasn't going to be blown up, instead he was going to be killed by contracting AIDS and dying as a result of the illness. And I know that sounds like a bad joke, but these plans were actually made to kill him off in this way, and Jason Todd wasn't the only one who was going to die like this, as Jimmy Olsen was also going to die as a result of contracting AIDS. Now, the reason that DC thought about doing this is actually quite simple, if a little bit weird. Back in the 80s, there was an epidemic from the AIDS virus, and not a lot was known about the illness, but a lot of people were catching it and dying, and so it was a hot topic of discussion and controversy and DC basically decided that they were going to cash in on this by using AIDS in a story to tell the death of a character and hoping that it would create a lot of buzz and sell a lot of issues. Although officially they said it was going to be an educational story about AIDS, but I think we can all agree it was going to just be to cash in. I might be wrong in that, but I doubt I am if I'm honest. And some say that DC sent out a memo to all their writers, asking them to consider using AIDS as a story device to kill off any of their characters. But the writer of the Death in the Family story, Jim Starlin, says that DC put out a suggestion box asking which character should be given AIDS, and then writers would put in their ideas of who they thought should be killed off. Now, Jim Starlin hated the idea of Robin, as he thought Batman having a child sidekick was really just child abuse. Which, to be fair, in the real world, it would be. But it's comics, and I think that we can all just go with it because it's a little bit of a fantasy. But because of this, Stalin wanted Robin gone, so he decided to put Robin's name in the box, and he did so every day until all the final votes were counted. And when it came out, it was decided that Robin was going to be killed with AIDS, and plans began to get made. That is until someone pointed out that all the suggestions in the box saying Robin were actually in Jim Stalin's handwriting, and it was actually just him that wanted Robin to die, and no one else. So DC scrapped this and threw out his suggestion. And so next in line was Jimmy Olsen, and DC decided that he would be the one to get AIDS and subsequently die from it. That was until they found out that the actor who plays Jimmy Olsen in the movies, Mark McClure, was gay. And because of that, they decided to scratch the project. Most likely because it could be seen as a homophobic attack. And I'm actually quite thankful that it was scratched, because it's just a terrible idea, and I'm really glad that it never made it to print. I mean, don't get me wrong, AIDS is a very serious issue, both back then and now, and if the subject was handled with care and told correctly, it could be quite a good story, and it could have actually been quite educational, allowing people to learn more about the AIDS issue. But comics rarely, if ever, handle such sensitive issues with care, and having either one of these two very young teenage characters somehow contract AIDS and then die from it, well, it doesn't sound like a good idea, and it really doesn't sound like they were handling the idea with care. Though on the plus side, after this happened, everyone knew that Stalin 100% wanted Jason Todd dead. Now to be fair, a lot of people already knew that, but after this happened, everyone in DC knew it. And Jim Stalin himself has said that it's because of this whole Jason Todd dying of AIDS thing that he eventually was able to tell the death in the family storyline and Jason Todd was killed. And since this led to Jason Todd getting resurrected and coming back as the Red Hood, one of the best DC characters ever created, well, all in all, this story does have a happy ending. And that's all I really wanted to say in this video. Some of you may have already known about this whole Jason Todd was going to be killed with AIDS thing, but I only recently found out about it, and I thought the idea was just so ludicrous that I had to make a video on it, because I actually find this extremely interesting and kind of fascinating to think that anyone at DC would have ever wanted to do this. I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but it does seem a bit weird that they were thinking, let's just kill off characters with AIDS to sell more comics, because a lot of people in the real world are dying of AIDS. It's really weird, let alone making plans to kill off two of the youngest sidekicks that they have in the DC Universe. 
which does actually raise the question of how they were going to contract these illnesses in the first place. I can't really speak for Jimmy Olsen, but Jason Todd was living on the street before he was found by Batman and saved by him, and they may have chosen to reveal that he was a rent boy at some point in his past, but most likely it would have been related to his mother. In the comic, his mother is a drug addict, and she is the bait that the Joker uses to capture Jason Todd. So perhaps he would have been exposed to the illness through one of her used needles, or the Joker may have said, oh, she's got AIDS from drugs, and now you do too, and then injected him with her infected blood. But no matter how much I think about this and all the different ways it could have been done, I still can't think of a single way this could have worked as a story. I mean, seriously, this whole thing is just utter madness. But what do you think? Do you agree that it's best this idea was stopped from ever happening? Or do you actually think that it could have been a good idea and that this story could have actually been quite interesting to read? Well, be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.